At the start of Hogwarts Legacy, you are asked to pick your Hogwarts house. It's presented as a very important decision, but the game never explains what the difference between the houses is and how much it will impact your experience. So we did some research and in this video, we'll tell you the biggest differences between the Hogwarts houses, including special cosmetics and unique missions that are exclusive to one of the four houses. If you've been enjoying Hogwarts Legacy and like the content here on the channel, then leave a like to help us out, subscribe for way more spoilers free tips and tricks videos on the game and let's go. So as soon as you arrive at Hogwarts after a little detour with Professor Fig, the sorting hat is placed on your head to determine your Hogwarts house. It will ask you two questions. The first one I think is more for flavor, but the second one will determine which house the hat will suggest. Now don't worry if you don't like the hat's decision as you can choose a different house if you don't agree. But if you want to get into a specific house right away, it's daring for Gryffindor, curiosity for Ravenclaw, loyalty for Hufflepuff and ambition for Slytherin. Do remember that there is no way to revert this choice, so after locking in your house, you cannot change it for that playthrough. Shortly after the sorting ceremony, you are sent back to your common room to rest and are then asked to get acquainted with a couple of your housemates. These common rooms are of course one of the major differences between the houses and some of them have cool secrets too, so more on those in a bit. Because what is already interesting here is that you of course get to talk to different people depending on your house. Hufflepuffs get to meet Adelaide, Arthur and Lenora, all side quest characters, but Ravenclaws already get to meet Amit for instance, who will play a part later in the main story. My Slytherin student was able to already talk to Imelda, who later appears in the broom flying races, as well as Ominous, who plays a major role in Sebastian's questline and Seb himself. Which is interesting because Gryffindor and Hufflepuff students don't get to talk to Natty and Poppy here. But you do get to talk to Cressida Bloom in the Gryffindor common room, who will later also appear as a quest giver for a side quest. And she will actually mention speaking to you before if you go and pick up her side quest as a Gryffindor student after, whereas with my Slytherin character, she introduces herself first because I had not met her yet. Same is by the way true for Lenora and her side quest as a Hufflepuff, so you do get some unique dialogue depending on your house with different side characters. Now unfortunately, this does not seem to be the case for all of them, as Imelda seemed to have no recollection of meeting me before when I came to her for the broom trials and Sebastian didn't remark on it either when I met him again in the dark arts class. But Amit makes reference of you both being in the same house when you interact with him much later in the story. There do seem to be a lot of house specific dialogues in the game so let us know if you found any fun ones worth mentioning down in the comments. Now like I said before one of the biggest differences your choice in house makes is your common room. This location is only accessible to members from the same house meaning you only get to enter one of them per playthrough. You can still go to the entrance of another house's common room, although nothing really seems to happen here in the case of the Slytherin and Ravenclaw common rooms. The fat lady whose portrait hides the Gryffindor room will simply tell you she's not letting you in. The password for today is... Please go away. And the Hufflepuff common room entrance actually sprays you with vinegar if you try and enter as a non-Hufflepuff student. This is something Professor Weasley also warns you about when entering the common room for the first time if you picked Hufflepuff during the sorting ceremony. Each of the rooms are by the way really cool and unique so you can't really pick a wrong one in that regard. The Slytherin common room still has the coolest entrance by far in my opinion and I love the fact that you can see fish out of the windows as the room offers an underwater view of the Black Lake. The Griffin Gryffindor common room is of course very iconic and the Hufflepuff one is a place I'd honestly love to live in. There are also some secret rooms like this one hidden behind a bookcase that looks like someone's secret snack room. It's full of pastries and stacked up plates. And Gryffindors can also find a secret room behind this clock that houses some trophies, a very impressive stack of chairs and a locked gear chest. But if you were to solely pick your house based on its common room, I'd say that the Ravenclaw one is actually the best because that is the only one with a secret room rooftop entrance. You need to pick the lock on it first so it's only accessible after learning Alahomora during the main story. But after picking the lock on this rooftop entrance you can simply take the stairs down, visit your common room and when you're done go back up and fly out again. And even though any student would be able to pick this lock you are unable to land on this roof as a member of any other house so this landing platform really is exclusive to Ravenclaw students. And if you want to reach this rooftop from outside the school just start from the flying class lawn flu flame where you can also do the summoner's court mini game then face towards the castle so east and then you should pretty much fly right into it. 
Now the biggest difference between each house actually shows itself a little bit later in the story and you probably won't even notice it on your first playthrough. It happens shortly after you unlock the Merlin trials as part of the main story because the quest after that is a different one for each of the four houses. They all lead back to the same point though so this is the only moment where the story really changes depending on your house but some of these quests are actually really cool. Won't spoil too much here but they all touch on some interesting topics or characters. As a Slytherin, you investigate a trail of notes that leads you to Scrope, Headmaster Black's personal house elf. He needs your help looking for a lost Black family artifact, which actually takes us to the giant squid mural in a hidden cave that someone found during the preview sessions. As a Ravenclaw, you are instead contacted by Gerbold Ollivander to help him look for a special one that has been missing for a long time. This leads your student to the Owlery, the giant tower off to the side of Hogwarts, where after solving a little puzzle, Puzzle, they can move on to the next main quest. Gryffindor students will find themselves in good company for their unique quest as it heavily involves the resident ghost of the Gryffindor Tower, nearly headless Nick. It also involves sneaking into the castle kitchens and a game of hide and seek with another ghost, so all in all, it's a pretty cool one. But by far the most interesting unique quest is the Hufflepuff exclusive Prisoner of Love. This one starts in your common room where the portrait of a former Minister of Magic asks you to help solve an unsolved murder mystery. History, which will actually take us to Azkaban Prison. Yup, those Dementors from the reveal trailer are actually in the game, but you only get to see them if you join the right house. Now, if you want to experience one of these quests in specific, remember that you can make four different character saves. Provided you pick a different house on each playthrough, you experience at least one mission you haven't before pretty early in the game. Plus, there's a trophy or achievement for reaching the map chamber with a student of each house. Considering the house exclusive missions take place before you go there, you'll need to play through all four of them in order to get the platinum trophy. The cosmetics you find will also vary greatly depending on your house. Gryffindor students will mostly be getting red robes, Ravenclaw blue, Hufflepuff yellow and Slytherin green. There are many variants of your house themed gear and you will only be able to wear the cloaks and robes from your own house. The best example of a house exclusive cosmetic is the relic house uniform that you get from the Dedalian Keys quest. We we actually covered this one and more great cosmetics in our outfits you don't want to miss video so I'll leave a link to that one in the video description for if you want to know how to get it. But these amazing robes look very different depending on which house you pick so definitely take that into consideration when picking a house for your student. The same is true for these house fanatic robes you get from linking your WB games and Harry Potter fan club accounts and any other item related to Hogwarts like this top of the class cloak you get for completing all assignments will also change depending on your your house. Subscribe for way more spoiler free tips and tricks for Hogwarts Legacy and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. If you want you can watch our previous one on the best spells in the game by clicking on the screen. I will see you in the next one, goodbye!